All right, so you probably already know that the Redmi K20 Pro is insane value for money, but it does have competition from the likes of the OnePlus 7, as well as the Xiaomi Mi 9. So welcome to the full camera comparison. Kicking things off with standard 4K video from the rear camera. And the first thing you'll notice is they're all pretty similar. In terms of both dynamic range and color profile, there really isn't much in it. They all side with a slightly oversaturated look with an emphasis on red hues, but I gotta say the result is clean across the board. Bear in mind that the K20 Pro can be had for approximately $360, OnePlus 7 at 530 and Mi 9 at about 470. Let's say you wanted to zoom in while taking video. Whilst both the Redmi and the Xiaomi have two times telephoto lenses, neither actually uses them in video. So when you zoom in two times, the quality isn't all that different. If you zoom in five times, you can really see that it's comparable. The OnePlus's footage looks a little clearer, but it's more the case that its HDR is more aggressive than the fact that it's actually capturing more detail. Thankfully, while they don't use their telephoto lenses in video, both the Redmi and the Xiaomi can use their ultra-wide cameras, and the difference it makes is massive, and it'll become even clearer when we get to photos. So here's the catch. The K20 Pro and the Mi 9 don't have OIS on any of their three cameras, and so even though the OnePlus 7 only has one main camera and a second just for depth, the fact that this main camera does have inbuilt stabilization makes a massive difference when you're walking. Even at 1080p here, the electronic stabilization on the two phones on either side is good, but it can't completely compensate for the lack of OIS. If you look at the K20's footage, you'll notice how every now and again when I take a step, it jerks about a little bit. All three phones can record slow motion video at 240 frames per second. And well, the OnePlus footage looks a lot better. It's partly sharpening. OnePlus has aggressive sharpening on slow-mo footage, which to be fair, the other two phones could really benefit from but it's also just capturing more detail. Take a look at the plant bots hanging above my head. The two phones on either side can level this up to short bursts of 960 frame per second footage. The OnePlus can shoot continuously, but only at 480. In low light, video falls apart on all three phones, but you might be able to tell that the Mi 9 is the furthest behind. Edges have lost a lot more sharpness than on the other two, and you'll see that this trend continues into photos. All three phones have a dedicated night mode, and as we start to go through these shots, you'll notice a very clear hierarchy forming. At the top is the OnePlus 7, followed by the K20 Pro, followed by the Mi 9. The Xiaomi phone uses very aggressive noise reduction, which does mean less grain than on the K20, but at the cost of super soft looking images. Compare the texture on the bench behind me in this shot, massive difference. Both the Redmi and the Xiaomi let you use the telephoto lenses in night mode, but with the OnePlus you just have to crop into the photo afterwards, which means if you did want to zoom in, it's going to lose quite a lot of fidelity. And then you've got ultra low light. The Mi 9 is a bit of a mess, but the OnePlus makes the image look far too warm, and this is not an issue that's restricted to just the OnePlus 7. On a similar note, with no external lighting using only the flash, OnePlus does a better job at keeping an image with the most true-to-life color. Front cameras also carry forward the same trend as the rear cameras, except in this case, instead of the Mi 9 being at the bottom of the pile, it's the K20 Pro. Each shot just has that bit more grain than its Xiaomi counterpart. With video from the front camera, you'll probably notice two things. Number one is that OnePlus crops into the sensor, so the footage looks much closer to you. And the second thing is that whilst it is the grainiest, OnePlus has captured more detail than the other two. On those phones, there is no hope of being able to distinguish the Mr. Who's the Boss logo on my shirt. Before we take a look at photos from the rear cameras, let's take a look at selfies. If you look at the text to the right of my head, you can see that OnePlus creates the most bokeh, but in some lighting can make me look a little bit red. All three can do portrait mode, and while the results are pretty contrasting, I'd say all three have great edge detection, even in difficult scenarios. The K20 does have a trick up its sleeve though, it lets you take panorama shots on the front camera, and this makes a huge difference to your field of view, but you've got to do it slowly, otherwise you can get some weird blurring in it. I mentioned already that the OnePlus 7 crops into the sensor for video, and this becomes especially apparent when you're trying to record yourself. The end result is really well balanced color-wise, it almost reminds me of iPhone XS footage, but the crop means that this is not a phone for vloggers. Okay, so for most people, in this hierarchy of which aspects of your phone's camera matter the most, right at the top is probably how does it take photos in the daytime, and this is where the K20 Pro's greatest strength lies. It's a phone that is so much cheaper than the OnePlus, and when you're in good lighting, there is no way you can tell, and in fact, in some ways it even pulls ahead. 
Take this shot right here, looks pretty equivalent on all phones, but the ultra-wide cameras on the Redmi and the Xiaomi make a game-changing difference. You might be able to tell that whilst the Mi 9 is capturing a ton more than the OnePlus, the K20 Pro is capturing even more than the Xiaomi. There are different degrees of ultra-wide, and so whilst the Mi 9 can capture everything in a 117 degree field of view, the K20 Pro can do so at closer to 125, which makes these kinds of shots even more dramatic. OnePlus also feels the pain when you start zooming in. Because it also lacks a telephoto camera, if you wanted to take, let's say, a 10 times zoom shot, it is a long way behind the other two, and between them, I'd say the Mi 9 takes it, marginally. The K20 Pro's shots are just slightly oversharpened. Things get really interesting when we dive into portrait mode, and the key takeaway here is that because the two phones on either end use their telephoto cameras for this, the end result has much less face distortion than on OnePlus. On that phone, you have to go right up to someone's face to take a shot like this, and that ends up making their face look a little too rounded. The other benefit is that with these two phones, you can take portrait mode shots closer to subjects. The OnePlus just won't work as soon as you get within a certain distance. One saving grace is that the OnePlus 7 does have the closest focusing distance, and combined with its wide f1.7 aperture, means more background blur in normal, non-portrait shots. The other important question is detail. So with all three phones on their 12 megapixel setting, if we crop in 20 times, this is the result. To be honest, there isn't much in it. They also all have a 48 megapixel mode, but to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of how it ends up looking. In all but the best conditions, 12 megapixel shots look better. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be massively appreciated. And if you haven't already seen the unboxing and review of the K20 Pro, then do check that out. I'll leave it as a link from this video. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.